Hey Glam Fam, Linwood here, and today I'm going to be showing you on my lovely mannequin here, Catherine, how to do a French braid with hair added. So I've got some jumbo hair over here by Altre. I'll go ahead and show you the pack. It's just a jumbo braid. This is a really inexpensive hair. A lot of people lately have been asking me what my favorite brand of braiding hair is and they assume that, they assume that it's expression hair, but honestly it is Rasta free. Um, the hair is incredibly soft and it's really easy to work with. But for the sake of the purpose of this video, we're going to be showing you with the Altre Jumbo Braid, which will get the job done. It's fairly soft as well. Alright, so I'm going to take about half of this bundle because I want it to be a pretty good size that I'm working with. And a lot of times people will want to just start braiding like this. But you guys can see how those ends are not tapered at all. It makes it a very abrupt stop to the end of the braid. So what I like to do is I'll grab half of it here. I'll grab the other half over here. And I just lightly pull it away from one another to stagger those ends some. So notice how just with doing that it begins to stagger some. And then from there I can take little pieces and begin to pull. What this is going to do is it's going to make sure that as I'm braiding, the braid gradually tapers down instead of just coming to an abrupt stop. So notice the difference there? That's with a very light amount of tugging. Now if you need this hair even longer or you want to taper it down quite a bit more, you can honestly do a lot more pulling with that, but honestly it's not necessary. Now the thing I like with this hair is even though it is a cheaper hair, it's pretty easy for me to get my fingers through so I don't have to worry about it catching a ton. Now I do have half of her hair pinned up over here because we're not going to be braiding on that half. I'm going to show you guys on this other half here. If you don't know how to French braid, I would recommend that you start out with my tutorial on overhand braiding and then go into French braiding before you attempt doing this with the hair added. If you're trying to jump right into this and you've never done a French braid, you're going to have a really tough time. So I'm going to start off with my brush here. You guys know how I feel about my Denman brush. It is the best brush ever. I absolutely love it. So I'm gonna start off by just kind of making sure this hair is detangled. And then I'm gonna bring you guys up close so you can see exactly what I'm doing. All right, so we're gonna begin by taking a, a triangle section of hair. Now, being that we are starting off with this uh, section of hair, I am going a little bit larger than I typically would. A lot of times I start off with a very small triangle, but I have a pretty good sized section of hair that I'm going to be adding into it, and it's going to leave a little bit of a hump here, so I want to make sure all of the artificial hair I'm adding is perfectly covered. So from there, I'm going to go ahead and just take my two fingers, slide them through that section, and that's going to instantly create three sections for me, like so. Y'all don't mind me, my allergies are acting up, so my nose is running like crazy. I apologize for sniffling in your ears. Okay, so that's how we would start that off. Now, in order to prepare for braiding, let me back you guys up a little bit. In order to prepare for braiding, what I'm going to do, this is my bundle I already stretched for you on camera. I'm going to take about a third of this bundle. So, I should feel like I have half in this hand of what I have in this hand. And it actually feels a little thin still, so I'm going to go ahead and fill that out. Alright, that feels like about half here that I do here. So the section where I have half, I'm going to take it and wrap it around the bigger section. So we're just wrapping it around, I'm going to add it to itself. Like so. And then I've got three strands that I'm working with, okay? Let me pull you guys back in so we can continue. Alright, so I have my mannequin here. I'm going to be going ahead and picking up this section of hair. So I've got, oh Lord, my nose, Jesus. Um, I've got this triangle section here and I'm going to just go ahead and separate that out like I showed you guys just a moment ago. Just like that. And notice I'm having to kind of hold on to quite a bit at a time. So I will say this is going to be a bit more difficult than you guys are accustomed to. From here, I've got my three strands. And I'm going to just go ahead and assign one natural strand to each of the additional strands. Just like so. Okay. So my middle strand gets assigned to my middle strand. My left strand gets assigned to the left. And my right strand gets assigned to the right. Now from there, I'm going to go ahead 
and just begin a simple braid, making sure I'm keeping my finger underneath there to hold that knot pretty secure. And once I take that first swipe, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this hair off to the side some. And then we're gonna go ahead and pull over from the opposite side, from the right. So we're starting off just as a regular French braid. Now notice I'm going quite a bit slower than normal because I wanna make sure that my knot is not doing a ton of sliding. Okay? So here we go. My knot is all good. Once I'm pretty sure it's secure, I'm gonna hold it nice and tight. And then from there, I'm gonna begin to pick up sections of hair from the outside and add it in. So basically my goal here is to cover up my little knots and things like that. So I'm gonna fan that hair out some, pass it over and right on in. I'm gonna do the same thing from this side here. So we're just picking up a bit of hair, smoothing it out with our fingers and pass it right on over. Let me do the same thing here. And we'll literally just continue this process all the way through. So I know right now it's looking a little like, wait a minute now. And I will tell you that this is more difficult than it looks, but uh, hopefully this is something that you guys will be able to pick up on pretty well. The biggest thing is gonna be your grip. Now notice each time I pick up hair, I'm smoothing that hair out as I add it in. That's incredibly important because it's gonna make your braid look a lot more neat. And then just understand that the smaller the sections that you pick up when you're braiding, the more neat and professional that braid is going to look. So we're just continuing that process down. In order to keep that braid nice and close to the scalp and tight, I'm gonna keep my hands as close to the scalp as possible. Okay, then every few steps, I wanna stop, drag my fingers all the way through the ends of the commercial hair that we're adding in. That's gonna help me to keep from having it mat up because keep in mind, this hair is synthetic hair, it's incredibly long, it tends to tangle really easily. So you wanna stop every couple steps when you're braiding, no matter what type of braid you're doing, and detangle through the ends of the hair. But especially if you're doing it with hair added, you really wanna make sure that you are uh, taking that extra step there. So you guys can see as you're doing this here, if the color is matching pretty close to your client's hair, it is virtually undetectable as to where that hair has been added in so long as you don't have a massive amount of hair added in there. And that's why I start off with a larger section of hair rather than starting off with a really small section like I typically would. So we're just gonna continue right on down. Sectioning off these small sections, smooth it out, add it to my outside strand on the left, and pass it up and over the center, which I will tell you guys, if you are used to doing underhand braiding, and this is like a bit more difficult for you, I want you to talk yourself through it the same way that I talk you through it in the video. So when I say that, what I mean is this, a lot of times when you are working with a type of braid that you're not accustomed to doing because you are more of a natural underhand braiding or whatever the case may be, uh, that type of braiding that you are more prone to do is gonna be a little bit different. You tend to braid with the creative side of your brain. So when you're learning a new braid or you're doing a braid that doesn't feel as natural to you, accessing that other side of the braid that's more analytical is a bit better. So talking yourself through it really helps you out with the steps and remembering what you're doing so you don't go into autopilot and start braiding underhanded or get lost in your design. Now I will say I've been braiding for so many years now that it's something where it's like once I get started on it, I get started on it and I just follow my rhythm but until you get to that point, sometimes talking yourself through it of saying, okay, add in and over. Add in to the right and 
right over center. Add into the left and left over center. Your clients might think you're a little crazy. Who cares? They're still gonna pay you. And ultimately, if their braid looks bomb, they don't care if you're crazy. It doesn't matter to them. All right, so I'm gonna kind of speed through some of this just so you don't feel like you're watching your entire life away on it. And then we'll pick up back towards the bottoms. Quick tip again, don't forget whenever you are braiding behind the ear, once you get behind the ear, you want to have your client tilt their head forward. What this does is it stretches the skin on the neck and it's going to help to ensure that if they tilt their head down later, it's not snatching that hair out at the base of the neck or causing any types of bumps. If you're braiding tight enough to where it's causing bumps on your clients, usually that's a sign that you're braiding a little too tight. You can actually cause hair loss from that called traction alopecia and you definitely don't want to put your clients through that type of discomfort and um, you know just be tearing up their follicles like that so this is just a I guess preliminary measure just to ensure that their hair and their scalp stay healthy because ultimately you want your clients to continue coming back and if they don't have any hair for you to do then you just lost the client so I know that might be somewhat comical, but it's the truth. All right, so once you get to where you are no longer picking up hair, you're just going to flip into a standard overhand braid because that's really all this braid is. It's just a standard overhand braid and you're just adding in hair as you go, which is why if you don't know how to do this or if these are difficult to grasp, my first step that I always tell people is go back to my video on overhand braiding and do it again it makes a massive difference. So from there, I'm just braiding this hair down and notice I'm just giving that hair a slight turn as I braid. What that's gonna do is it's gonna help to secure the ends of the hair that is not artificial hair and allow it to kind of tuck in there and blend with this braiding hair. And it just gives a certain smoothness to the braid as well. So let me back you up a little bit so you guys can still kind of see what's going on and see where the hair on the mannequin stops. The hair continues to taper down on the ends of this artificial hair. So we just continue that process all the way down. And see how with doing that slight twist, it just makes that braid look so much more plump and smooth. It just gives it a certain niceness. That's one of those tricks that I keep in my back pocket in the salon, just so you know, that really helps your braids look incredibly neat. It's an extra step uh, that at first feels a little awkward, but it makes a huge degree of difference. Now notice I'm already well past where the hair stops. There's no more of the mannequin hair here, but notice how there's no hair popping out, anything like that. So on straighter hair, you can do this type of technique and it will allow you to easily tuck that hair away and just continue on with your braid. So we're just continuing on braiding all the way down to the tips of the hair. Now on the ends of this, you could choose to, because this is synthetic hair, you can choose to roll it on a roller and dip it in boiling water. You can choose to tie it off with some of the excess uh, braiding hair. You can choose to secure it with a rubber band. So however you choose to secure it is entirely up to you, but it's really that simple. It will take a little bit of practice. I'm gonna warn you now but once you get it down, it's not bad at all. If I'm gonna secure it with some of the hair, what I'm gonna do is take a very small amount and wrap it around and then just pull it through the little loop I create there. And it's knotted on the end, we're good and secure. All right, so from start to finish, of course, let me know what you guys think down in the comment box below. Thank you guys so much for watching. You're the bomb.com. I love you, Glam Fam. Stay glam, and I will see you next time. God bless. And if you're enjoying Glamtober, please continue watching. Bye bye.